This is a very swift contrast between how graphics are handled in Microsoft Word and FrameMaker. To start out with, um, I'll do something most of us have done. I'm going to simply insert a picture into Word. And I'm going to do this by selecting the photo. As I do this, this brings in the picture. And a big contrast to FrameMaker is you'll notice that as a default, um, it does not come in as an anchored frame. In fact, if I add more text, you'll see it's simply a graphic moving along on the baseline. Now with additional steps, it certainly is possible to do something more elaborate with a graphic. But in a moment, you're going to see that the defaults in FrameMaker <coughs> are much more, much more appealing. What we have in front of us is a 3D diagram that has been previously imported. And I wanted to start out with something really powerful and then back up to the simple graphic import. Let's go into the graphic commands. And I wanted you to notice that there's a new command in FrameMaker 11 called link table to graphic. This will work with 3D diagrams like the one we see here. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a style for tables because we do have a table catalog. And I have various choices. I'm asking FrameMaker to actually quickly generate a table of all of the parts that took to create that diagram. Once that's done and we save this to PDF, we'll get the following results. The PDF file actually becomes dynamic PDF in which the user can interact with the diagram. So in order to illustrate this, let me go ahead and actually select a couple of the views. And those hyperlinks that I talked about are actually um, allowing us to have this type of experience. The table that was uh, created over here, I could go ahead and select a particular part like the inter derailleur and I may want to go ahead and move it around to the back view to see that or the outer derailleur and move to the front view where we can see that better. So once again the user is actually achieving a guided experience. Let's go back into FrameMaker and do something a little bit more basic. What I'm going to do this time is to actually um, delete that table and I'm going to go ahead and uh, simply import a couple of diagrams or maybe just one or two. And what I'd like to accomplish with this is to simply give you an idea of the flexibility you have for positioning your graphics once they are imported. So first of all I'm going to um, just to zoom down to 70% so we can see the entire page. And let's work a little bit with that same elephant diagram that we started out with in Microsoft, in Microsoft Word. I'm going to go ahead and import the exact same illustration, this one. And upon import, notice down at the bottom that the default is import by reference. So this will be a referenced graphic that is outside of the file. This will actually make your file sizes often 10 or 20% the size of a very large Microsoft Word file. We don't get the bloat that comes from imported graphics. <clears throat> Excuse me, I can also choose the, D, the, DTP, the DPI scaling that I'd like to achieve when I bring the graphic in. Now notice as a default that this actually comes in, you can see a little square with handles around it. This actually has created an anchored frame automatically. So in one single step you're getting what would take several steps with Microsoft Word. You have a great deal of control over this anchored frame. We can do various things like we can make it go to the top of the column. Uh, we could decide to make it go to the bottom of the column or, and you can imagine the elephant is down there, or perhaps we may want it to actually uh, tuck itself um, into the paragraph, and I may want to do this on the right-hand side. Okay, and once you've done this, you'll also notice that this is indeed a paginating um, graphic. So it's just that simple to bring in an anchored frame. The final thing I'd like to point out is that you have a great deal of control over the graphics that are inside of the anchored frame. I just selected optic properties. This is actually giving me a snapshot picture of the path and where it is. It's also telling me it's been scaled 48% and that it was brought in at 150 dpi. Another place that you can monitor your graphics is in the pod down at the bottom of the screen. And if you simply click on insets, this will show you any of your um, graphics. In fact, when I choose this other elephant picture, it jumps me to that page, and I've just selected the one that I just brought in, and you can see that it brought it, it went ahead and actually selected the physical graphic inside of the anchored frame. One thing that's really useful here is you can see the entire path, and so for instance, I can see that I have uh, two graphics that are coming from my miscellaneous photo images, but I have one that's coming from quite a different place. So that's a way to quickly monitor whether you're illustrations are coming from the correct location. And this is just a quick overview of just a few of the ways that FrameMaker gives you far more control over both the importation of your graphics, management, and placement once they come in.